Welcome to the session on composting, module 6 of the subject C474, Municipal Solid Waste Management as per APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University, 8th semester, prepared by Teresa Kurian, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology, Kakanad. Topics covered in this session include Introduction, Types of Composting, Properties of Compost, Phases of Composting, Optimal Condition for Composting, Composting Technologies, Indoor Process, Bangalore Process. Now let's see what is composting. It is a process in which organic matter of the solid waste is decomposed and converted to humus and stable mineral compounds. The end product of composting process is called compost, which is a rich fertilizer. Composting is practiced on a small scale at households and on a large scale at central composting facilities. The organic waste are collected, separated, composted and the resulting stabilized or biodegraded product obtained are known to be beneficial. They improve the soil structure, especially in clay soils. Compost is rich manure consisting of important plant nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and hence used as fertilizers to improve soil fertility. Now coming to the different types of composting. Aerobic composting. In this, aerobic microbes oxidize organic matter into carbon dioxide, nitrite and nitrate. Carbon is used as a source of energy and nitrogen is recycled. Second, anaerobic composting. In this, anaerobic microbes break down organic matter through the process of reduction. Methane and carbon dioxide are evolved. Passive composting. Composting takes place in a natural way. It is a slow process and takes around six months to degrade the waste. Next, active composting. It is a fast process where the natural process of composting is accelerated by maintaining or performing the composting process under proper conditions of air, moisture, temperature and carbon to nitrogen ratio. Regular turning off and maintenance of 40 to 60 percentage moisture will fasten up the composting process and complete them within three months. Properties of compost. Color is dark brown to black in color with earthy odor. pH is neutral, but pH range of 6.5 to 7.5 is acceptable. Compost should neither be dry, lumpy or watery. The level of nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus should be more than 1 percentage. Carbon to nitrogen ratio should fall between 15 to 20 and nitrogen should be in the form of nitrates so that plants can easily utilize it. Now let's see the process of composting. Microbes are allowed to feed on organic matter and as a result humus is formed which is also known as compost plus water plus carbon dioxide and some heat is also evolved. Microbes which are involved in the composting process are mesophilic and thermophilic bacteria, actinomycetes, fungi, protozoa and rotifers. Now let's see different phases of composting. There are three different phases of composting. Mesophilic phase, thermophilic phase and maturation phase. Mesophilic phase lasts for couple of days and the temperature is around 40 degrees Celsius. Thermophilic phase can last for few days to some months. The temperature is around 55 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. And the third one is the maturation phase, which is also known as the cooling and curing phase. It may last for several months. Now let's see the phase one, that is the mesophilic stage in detail. It is the first stage of composting. At the beginning of the composting process, the mesophilic bacteria proliferate and increase the temperature of the pile to 44 degrees Celsius. The mesophilic bacteria can even include E. coli and other bacteria from the human intestinal tract. 
This stage lasts for a couple of days after which the temperature of the pile increases up to 52 degrees Celsius. Henceforth, the thermophilic bacteria takes over the compost pile. Phase 2 Thermophilic Stage It is the second stage of composting. In this process, thermophilic microorganisms are very active and produce a lot of heat. Temperature goes up to 70 degrees Celsius. Such high heating lasts only a few days. It remains localized in the upper portion of the pile where the fresh material is being added. At this high temperature, the disease-causing organisms and weeds are killed. Even the humic acid production takes place at this temperature. Humic acid helps plant to assimilate nutrients. Higher the temperature, faster will be the composting. The maturation phase, which is also called as cooling and curing period. During this phase, the microorganisms that were replaced by the thermophilic reappear in the pile. These help in digesting the coarser and more resistant organic particles. Fungi and microorganisms that break the coarser elements down into humus also invade and move back into the piles. Curing period is an important phase in composting process because immature compost may be harmful to plants. Optimal condition for composting. You can see the different parameters which are oxygen level, free air space, particle size, carbon to nitrogen ratio, moisture content, temperature and the pH range. Okay, oxygen level it should be 13 to 18 percentage, free air space 40 to 60 percentage, particle size a mixture of particles between 3 and 50 mm, then carbon to nitrogen ratio for active composting it should be in the range of 25 is to 1 to 30 is to 1, curing 18 is to 1 to 23 is to 1 and for storage 15 is to 1 to 20 is to 1, moisture content Active composting 55 to 65 percentage, curing 45 to 55 percentage, storage 40 to 45 percentage. Similarly, temperature for active composting 55 to 60 degrees Celsius, curing less than 50 degrees Celsius, storage ambient temperature, and pH ranges from 6.5 to 8. Now, coming to the different composting technologies. First, static pile. Static pile. It includes first feedstock preparation, that is size reduction, mixing, etc. The pile or windrow of composting material receives minimal turning, that is one to four turnings and aeration. It takes longer to produce a finished compost product than with other technologies. If mechanical aeration is provided, that is forced air, it becomes an aerated static pile. Aeration reduces the processing time required. An aerated static pile system can be enclosed in a building. A finished product can typically be produced in 12 to 18 months. This figure shows the aerated static pile composting in which we will be applying the air. That is, a forced air is applied by means of mechanical method. Second type of composting technology is open windrow composting. Open windrow composting. It involves first feedstock preparation, that is size reduction, mixing, etc. Large piles of windrows of composting materials is composted outdoors on a paved or unpaved surface. Aeration and mixing is provided with a payloader or a specialized windrow turner. This method of composting is particularly preferred for leaf and yard waste, but food waste can also be composed outdoors. Care must be taken to ensure that the process is properly managed. Additional aeration that is mechanical can also be provided. Off gases generated during the composting process can be collected and treated using a biofilter. A finished product can typically be produced within 6 to 12 months. Aeration and mixing which is done with the help of payloader type of composting technology is enclosed channel composting. Enclosed channel composting. In this system, composting takes place in channels. Mixing of organic waste is provided with a specialized automated turner which typically straddles the concrete walled channels on rail or wheels. 
Additional aeration is provided via a mechanical aeration system. All enclosed channel systems will include some level of feedstock preparation, that is size reduction, mixing, etc. Materials typically reside in enclosed channel systems from 7 to 28 days. These systems typically employ automated temperature gathering equipment, example thermocouples. These systems typically include a mechanical of gas removal system and order abatement infrastructure, example biofilter. After discharge from the channel, compost is cured in a separate area, often employing a windrow type technology. A finished product can typically be produced in 3 to 6 months. Another type of composting technology is in-vessel composting. In this type of systems, composting takes place in a purpose-built container or tunnel. A composting system employing this system will have one or a number of containers. This is a modular system, so additional containers, that is, in order to increase processing capacity, uh, it can be added as required. Aeration is provided via a mechanical aeration system. All in-vessel systems will include some level of feedstock preparation, that is, a size reduction, mixing, etc. Materials typically reside in in-vessel systems from 3 to 14 days. These systems typically employ sophisticated automatic temperature gathering equipment, example thermocouples. These systems also include a mechanical off-gas removal system and order abatement infrastructure, that is biofilter. After discharge from a composting container, compost is cured in a separate area, often employing a windrow type technology. Now coming to the technical options for solid and liquid waste management in rural areas. The Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation, Government of India has suggested several technological options for the management of solid waste in rural areas. They include pile method of composting, NADAP method, Bangalore method, Indo method, Coimbatore method, wormy composting, thermophilic composting, and biogas technology, out of which we need to study Bangalore method and Indo method. Bangalore method of composting. Acharya in 1939 had initiated the work of composting the town refuse and night soil. This process is also called hot fermentation mechanism of composting. This process is carried out in pits and is anaerobic in nature. Initially, the waste is anaerobically stabilized in pits where alternate layers of organic waste and animal dung is laid. The pit method of making compost conserves moisture. Hence, it will be of use in areas with low rainfall areas and areas facing dry season. This method cannot be used in wet areas as the compost may become waterlogged. Coming to the details, in this method, a pit of 4 feet wide and 2 feet deep is dug. The ingredients are added in layers, starting with vegetable matter, followed by cow dung and soil in that order. That is, you can see in this picture, first layer, waste, second layer, dung, third layer, soil. And we'll be continuing this pattern. That is, first waste, then cow dung, and then all that, soil. So water is added only if it is necessary. After the waste loading, the pit is covered with a final layer of soil to prevent entry of water and also to minimize flies. The waste is allowed to decompose for 4 to 6 months after which the stabilized material is taken out and used as compost. The Bangalore method requires longer time for stabilization of the material and hence need large land area. The gases generated in this anaerobic process also pose smell and odor problems. Into method of composting. This process was developed by Howard and Ward in 1931 at Into Madhya Pradesh. It is an aerobic method that composts waste materials such as plant residues, animal waste, weeds, street refuse and other organic waste. The waste materials are shredded and spread in layers of 10 to 15 cm thickness either in pits or in heaps 
of 1 meter wide, 1 meter deep and of convenient length. They are moistened with cow dung. This method of composting in pits involves filling of alternate layers of small thickness as in Bangalore method. Periodically, 3 to 4 turnings are given to the waste materials to maintain aerobic conditions. The frequency of the turning is as follows. The first turn is manually given 4 to 7 days after filling. The second turn is given after 5 to 10 more days. Third turn is also given after 5 to 10 days. Further turning is normally not required and the compost is ready within 4 to 5 weeks. In this method, odorous gases are not generated. It is environment friendly and hence commonly preferred.